Hey, my name is Thomas and today I bring to you the Nikon EM, the baby Nikon, the cheapest and smallest Nikon, manual focus Nikon that you can buy today in 2021. So let's have a go. This camera came on the market in 1979 and it was a first for Nikon. So far they were famous for making, you know, super rugged cameras. They were like the Mercedes-Benz of cameras, totally over-engineered, used in war zones by journalists and the like. Also pretty heavy and expensive. And this one, this was the first trial of a true amateur camera. So this has like a plastic body, for example. It's made from lightweight materials and it's made to appeal to the amateur also in terms of price and simplicity. So Nikon decided to enter the amateur market and they wanted to get it all right. So they got the help from Giorgio Giugiaro, the famous Italian design studio that for example made the Volkswagen Golf, the car that saved Volkswagen from only producing Beetle-like old-fashioned cars and transformed them into a modern car manufacturer. And these guys uh, also designed the Nikon EM. It was their first Nikon. Uh, they got it all right. It's a very sleek, a very uh, reduced design uh, looks very elegant actually even though it's also a bit simplistic doesn't have a lot of operating features in operation the Nikon EM is very very simple there is the shutter button there is this advanced lever that flips out but it doesn't turn on the light meter metering is turned on by touching the button very easy film advance and here is the rewind with the ISO dial around it then we've got the lens release button, of course, a self-timer, and on the bottom we've got this small compartment for the battery. And that's it. The viewfinder display is also very neat. There is an analog readout that shows you the shutter time that the camera automatically selects. Remember, this is an aperture priority camera. There is no real manual mode. And you've got the split image focusing screen with a prism ring around it to aid your focusing. This camera was dismissed by many when it came out in 79 and it's still dismissed by many today and there are some valid reasons for that. However, this camera really has a two-faced soul. So let's start maybe with the reasons why you would dismiss this camera. Number one is, uh, this is an auto uh, exposure camera only. You have an aperture priority mode but no manual mode. And you also don't have this, you know, a plus minus uh, wheel where you can compensate for exposure and you also don't have a button or uh, anything or a lever to save the exposure reading so you can recompose after exposure has been metered so this is auto only but it's just you have to trust it the only thing how you can uh, change the exposure is there's a little button a compensation button it's meant for backlit situations you press this button and the camera will automatically overexpose by one and a half stops roughly and of course you can always change the ISO setting to uh, compensate, but that's a little bit of a crude method, right? It comes good. That means everything is going to turn out well. So now let's point to the positive things of this camera, finally. This is a real Nikon. So you see the 
spirit of the Nikon engineering also in this camera. They cut cost and weight by making a plastic outer body shell, but inside it's got a pretty rugged chassis made from metal. Uh, and also the shutter mechanism and everything is really designed to a very high standard. Also, be, even though it's aperture exposure only, they did fit a manual mode, so in case your battery dies, you can still shoot this thing at this M90 second, at 1 90th of a second, and then uh, without a battery, you just follow the Sunny 16 rule. So in case you're just abroad traveling somewhere and the battery dies, this camera will work in manual mode and get you the pictures. Uh, also, the B setting for long time exposures works without battery, which is pretty clever because on many of these 1970s cameras with an electronic shutter, it would drain the battery pretty quickly when you're doing long time exposures. At night, it's a little bit uh, colder also very often. So that was an additional strain on the battery and this camera doesn't do it. Manual B setting, very good. And of course, it gives you full access to the Nikon Bayonet and a huge amount of Nikon lenses. Typically, these cameras were sold with the so-called E-series lenses, which have a more basic um, mechanism, but the optics of the E-series lenses were also really, really good. Very short history lesson. The Nikon EM, which was the first of these really lightweight amateur bodies, came out in 1979 and it was quickly succeeded by the Nikon FG in 1981, uh, which added, this is aperture priority only, and the FG added the shutter priority mode as well as a program auto mode and full manual control with all the shutter speeds on a dial yeah and then there was the fg20 which was aperture priority again only but also with a manual speed so either of these are, uh, belong to this body series, the EM series, we would call it. And in 1984 already came the next generation of Nikon cameras, the F301, but that's another story. Regarding long time exposures, you've got two possibilities. Either you just leave the camera on auto, it will take a long time exposure up to around two minutes automatically. Or you do it the traditional way, you set it on B here. Uh, in the B setting, it won't meter, so you have to decide how long you want to expose. You use a cable release. The plus side is it doesn't consume battery when it's in B. Fun fact, did you ever notice these small orange stickers uh, on all these Japanese cameras and lenses? They are from an association, I have to read it because it's such a long name. Japan Camera and Optical Instruments Inspection and Testing Institute was funded in 1954 and it was an organization to make sure that only high quality products would leave Japan and go into export to make the position of the Japan industry stronger and export countries. This institute was later renamed to Japan Camera Industry Institute JCII and that's what you see on these stickers. So overall, this is a very unobtrusive camera. It's a real cool traveler's camera. I maybe wouldn't get this as my only SLR camera. Uh, I would really like something a little bit more substantial and with more manual features. You can also offer the Nikon FG or the FG20. These are the direct successors of this camera and they both have a manual mode, uh, which can be very helpful sometimes. Uh, of course, you can also step up to the Nikon FM or FE series. 
Um, the advantage of this is it's really lightweight. The body only is 460 grams, which is even less than an Olympus OM1. And also you can pick these up really cheap. You can score one off eBay always below 100 euros, including a 50 millimeter standard lens. So that's a really good deal. I love to shoot this camera when I'm just, you know, traveling to a city, I have a small weekend trip, something like that. Don't want to worry too much about photography. And then this auto exposure, feature is really very handy, especially when you're using black and white or color negative film. For a slide film, you want to have more control over your exposures, as I said. Okay, so much for the Nikon EM. I hope you found this useful or maybe even interesting. If you did so, then please leave a like. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet. It's a great, great, great support for my channel. Many thanks again for all of you that already did subscribe. I really appreciate that. And last but not least, don't forget to hit the small bell button so you get a notification whenever I upload my next video. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching Tom's Cameras. Live long and prosper. Have a great time and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.